Okay, so good evening, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to our Sunday evening service. Um, so blessed to be able to come together and be able to um, just sing praise and uh, and just kind of come to this place of of remembering and recognizing what we've been pulled out of, you know, like. Um, all of the things that, that we have lived through, all of the things that we have uh, maybe even suffered through or are still suffering through, that, um, that we have a God that just loves us so much that is present with us. Not one that is far away and is watching from afar, but one that is present with us. One that dwells within us. One that gives us a strength um, that only comes from him that we can withstand the trials that we face. And so tonight, um, I know it's Mother's Day and um, we usually like to give this day as, you know, where we're focusing on a mother's love and, um, and what that looks like. But the love that always comes to our mind when we think of a mother's love is a sacrificial love. And it's a love that has been modeled and in, exemplified through Christ Jesus. And so um, tonight, wherever you are in your hearts, wherever you are in your relationship with your mother, or with your children, um, may we remember that the only reason that we're able to love is because we were first loved. Yeah, so I just wanted to just kind of um, help us to, to just bring our focus to to the reason why we can love the way that we do, the way that we hope to, the way that we pray to, the way that we strive to, um, is all because of Christ Jesus. So if you could bow your heads with me, please. Father God, we love you so much. And we thank you for, um, for everything that you've done for us. We thank you so much for um, just desiring this intimate relationship with us for just calling us deeper, for um, just always being present, even when we feel like we're alone. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for um, just this time that we can come together as your people, as your children, to be reminded of, of who you are. who you are. Lord, so we, um, as we sing these songs, as we open your word, Lord, I just pray that, that more is revealed to us tonight about your love. Lord, that we leave this place changed, that something stirs in us that has not before, that we have a passion and a desire to carry your love out into the world. So we love you and we praise you, we worship you, and we pray all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Psalms 100, it says, Shout the joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfading love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. <laughs> Hallelujah. We stand and lift up our hands. Peace. 
up, Lord, for being our foundation that doesn't change, Lord. Your unchanging, your unchanging love, Lord. Your, your, your grace, your mercy. Ah, you're always there, Lord. Ah, we thank you, Father. He said, like, you guys are my slave. He's talking to his disciples. He said, you guys are no longer my slaves, bro. But I, I call you guys my friend because I, I letting you know what the Father's will is. <laughs> you know? Like, um, nothing is hidden from you. 
I'm taking you straight to the Father so that you can understand the will He has for you. <laughs> and that brings us into friendship with Jesus that we 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 part of this um we part of this will, this this mission, like right? the Father's will, yeah. <laughs> Jesus said, like, oh, whatever the Father has given me, I I have given you that. I, I abide in the Father. You guys abide in me. Oh, you guys is my friends. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, yes, Lord thank you for thank you for the, the, the way, Lord. So you're the way and the truth in our life. So you give us a way to, to live this life every day. Follow you, Lord. Cause where you go, I'll go. Where you stand, I will stay. When you move, I'll move. Lord, I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. With this life, I'll do. Cause in you there 
have the mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. left and right, Lord. You, it says you make good out of all things who love you, Lord. Because we are we abide in you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you all the praises. We are. Yeah, Lord, I just pray whatever is in our heart that is hindering us from you to help us to um, yeah, reveal them to us, Lord, so we can have them, we can take them on. And I just pray that you, yeah, Lord, fill us up with you, Lord. Your word, with your 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 truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. guys here. Okay. Okay, 
Mother's Day, everybody. Um, but yeah, today is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the people that have taken on the task of mothering, whether it's um, biologically, through adoption, through fostering, through caring for ones that have been forgotten, through ministering to young hearts about how we're able to love, supporting the children inside and outside their own families, and those that make room for a child or teen that just has this yearning for a maternal connection. So happy Mother's Day to all who, who do those things. And a prayerful Mother's Day to all of those who are longing to mother, have lost a child, missing their mother, having been separated from their mother, those who have lost their mother to afflictions or strained relationships or feel otherwise abandoned. This day is one that brings much connection and appreciation for those that have positive relationships with the women that raise them or the children that they have raised. But it's also a day that brings painful reminders for those that feel a sting of emptiness or longing or hurt when thinking of their mother, whether present or not, or their child or children, depending on the closeness that feels impossible. So, so often, um, and I know I said it earlier, but so often we see stories or proud statements on a day like today by children about their mother. And it has much to do with the sacrificing that the mother has endured, the love that she poured out, or always being present for not just the big moments, but the small ones too in their child's life. It's a love that stands out to us. It's one that we um, like to look back at or that we wish that we could recall, whether we experience it ourselves or if we've seen it in a spectator's view, longing to be on the receiving end of such a love if we haven't been fortunate. But it's also a love that baffles us as we get older, as we start to parent our own children, or as we start to recount how hard it must have been to always place oneself on the back burner. A sacrificial love is what stands out to us on Mother's Day. But the truth is, it stands out always. For those of you that don't know, I worked in child abuse prevention um, for the last six years of my life. I spent countless hours like going to schools and churches, training facilities, and sometimes even public spaces to share with our communities how we can be better allies to children that are finding themselves alone in their survival of abuse taking place at home. And I share statistics, I share stories, and I share um, tips of what we can do as adults um, that know these children, how to lessen the impact of the abuse that they experience. One of the facts that I share that catches people off guard is who the child discloses or um, makes known something that was supposed to be a secret or has been a secret. Um, who children are more likely to disclose abuse to? And the person children are more likely to disclose abuse to is moms. Moms. It doesn't have to be their mom. It doesn't even have to be their best friend's mom. It just has to be a mom. Any mom that they know. So there's a protection that is recognized in mothers that children can feel, they can see it. It's something tangible. They disclose their deepest, most painful secrets and hope that they'll be shown the love that they have been seeing played out in other families. And so I know this is like really heavy kind of stuff, but it's, it's something that always stands out to me, that it's moms. Moms are seen as a safe place. And so it's like, well, why is that? What is it about moms that does that? So in one of our scripture passages tonight, um, we're reminded of a love that is expected, almost in the same way that we expect mothers to love. And it may, be, may even be why Mother's Day is so painful for those of us that don't have close relationships with our moms or our children, 
because there's a love, a level of love that is expected there. But if you have your Bibles, we're going to be turning to 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. We have, um, we have Bibles on the yellow table over there. If it's easier for you to access your Bible on your phone, that's fine too. Um, we're going to be looking at a few scriptures tonight in our encouraging word. Yeah, so 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Chapter 5, verse 1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. So we'll look at that first one again. It says, by loving God, we should also love his child. By loving God, we should also love his child. In my new international version, it says, and everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. And so in the NRSV or the New Revised Standard Version, the word father is swapped out for parent. And when I first saw that scripture, I was thinking, oh, this is talking only about God and only about Jesus. He who loves the father should love the child as well. But then seeing these different, um, these different translations, having different words there, having different words in those places of father, reminds me that it's, it's also talking about that familial love. That, that loyalty to family. If you love someone, if I have a friend and I love my friend, I should also love my friend's child, you know? And we automatically know like, okay, if we love God, we, we love Jesus, you know? We already know that, but um, seeing these, this, this swapping in the words reminds me of the loyalty that is stated and understood about love extending from parent to child. It's a loyalty. And understanding that if you love someone, you love that person's child as well. Or that's how it should be. But how will we know that we love the children of God? If we were to look at this verse and see it as, if we love the Father, then we will love his children as well. That includes us all. That includes everybody. There's a loyalty to family. When we become a part of the family of God, of the people of God, there is an expectation of loyalty to not only love the Father, but to love the Father's children as well. But how will we know that we love the children of God, those that are made in his image? Verse two reminds us, if you look at verse two, it reminds us, this is how we know we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. His commands. And the commands that that we're to carry out, they're not burdensome. They're not something that's gonna be so hard for us to do. In our flesh, it's hard to love God's children, to love them as they are, to love them where they're at. Um, and this part about it not being burdensome reminds us of, of all of these other laws that kind of come into our mind as believers, as people of God that people have to be at a certain place in their walk in order for us to be a part of their life. That people have to be a part of a certain crowd in order for us to reach out to them or to invite them to church. And just last week I was talking about this, 
this realization that I had where I had never really invited my dad to church, you know? It seemed like a lost cause, like, oh, he doesn't say no. <laughs> you know, oh, he's gonna say, no thanks, little Pua, you know, whatever, whatever, however he would say those things, or he would laugh. Um, because in my mind, my dad wasn't at that place where I could invite him in. He wasn't ready in my mind. Yeah. But because of this whole pandemic, because of having to move things to an online format, my dad sought us out. Yeah. And that was a beautiful thing. And he sought us out because we moved away from where we were. We moved away from our being close in proximity. He wanted to connect. He wanted to be connected to his family. And because of that, he found out the different ways that he could do that. Yeah. He's like, oh, they're on Facebook Live? Let me see, I think I have a Facebook Live. And he would join in every Sunday. And he would text in or he would comment and say, I'm here, it's showtime. <laughs> so some of you have probably seen it or not. Um, but every single, if you go back to our lives starting from March of 2020, or April of 2020 when we first started uploading videos, you'll see a comment that says, I am here, it's showtime. And I remember telling Ryan, I remember telling him like, I want to tell my dad like, this isn't a show, you know, <laughs> like this is a church service, daddy. Like, I don't know if you should be saying it's showtime. Um, this is a worship service. But I never said that because I was so overjoyed that he had joined in, that he had logged on. Yeah, man. But it's like this reminder, like, it was a reminder to me that in my mind, my dad wasn't at a place where he was ready to accept Jesus. My dad wasn't at a place where he was ready to be invited to church or be welcomed in. But it wasn't even something that I had to do. He sought Jesus out. Through something so small as a Facebook Live. And I think about all the, the worry, all of the stress that I had, and crying as I was a child and a teenager, just saying, I just want my dad to go to heaven, you know? I want my dad to know Jesus, but there was nothing I was really doing. I just wanted him to know Jesus. Um, and just how, how easily all of that happened. And the way that it really happened was building that relationship with was being present in my dad's life, was loving my dad no matter where he was, was accepting him for the person that he was. All of that revealed to him a love that he never experienced. He never experienced that kind of love before. And he saw it coming from his youngest child, you know, and her husband and their kids. And so this love that was just bringing this stubborn Hawaiian man, <laughs> you know, into this, this family of God just through loving him and meeting him where he was, was causing him to seek Jesus. It's causing him to seek Jesus. And so that reminds me when it says that God's commands are not burdensome. It's not burdensome. Just love them. Love them where they are. His commands are not burdensome because his command is to love me. Love God with everything in you, all your heart, all your mind, everything in you. Love me and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the commands. It's not burdensome. It's something that's so easy. As long as we have Jesus, we can do that, you know? As long as we have Jesus, we can do that. But it's also a reminder that we place expectations yeah, on other people, that we make other laws, or we make, um, we feel like things have to be a certain way before we can love somebody. But this reminder that God's command is not burdensome means that nah, that's not even a part of it. There's not a precursor to loving somebody. There's not something that they need to prove to you to love them. There's not some place they need to be. There's not a certain life they have to be living. There's not a certain way they need to look or a group that they need to come from or a race they need to be 
They just need to be who they are and your command is to love me so that you can love them. It's a reciprocal love. It's a love that we're also given to give out. It's not a love that we just have in ourselves and we're like, oh, I'm just gonna love this person. But it's a love that, that we first received. And not to hold on to for ourselves, but it's a love that we receive in order to respond. At Christmas time, we talk about God with us. We say, Emmanuel, God with us. And God is not only with us just so we can be like, yes, sir, God is with us, you know. But God is with us so that we can be with our brothers and sisters. God is with us so that we can be with others, so that we can love others. Yeah. And his command, his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And so this, this sacrificial love that we celebrate on Mother's Day, this love that forsakes ourselves even, you know, this, this love that when we see moms, we're like, oh, you know, my mom, she used to do this for me. She used to go without so that I could have, or she used to stay up late and help me on our school projects or any of that kind of stuff. All those things that we say, we're pointing out this sacrificial love that our moms have. Or the sacrificial love that our auntie or grandma or whoever it is in our life had. And that's what we celebrate. That's what stands out to us. But like we said earlier, that sacrificial love was first modeled by Christ Jesus. That's a love that was first modeled by Jesus. And then we see it being played out in our own lives and it stands out to us. Even before we're believers, it's a love that stands out to us. It's a love that stands out to kids that are hurting at home and don't know who else to go to. They seek out a mom. They seek out a mom because they recognize what sacrificial love looks like. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. But I also wanted to um, kind of point to where this love can take us, yeah. So in Acts chapter 10, um, in Acts chapter 10, it's, it's like this, um, this other part, this other reminder of what God's love can do, of what the Spirit does. And so if we look at Acts chapter 10, we're going to be in verses 44 to 48. Um, but before we get there, I kind of want to give like a backstory. So, um... Our verses in Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48 come after Peter um, goes to Cornelius' house. So Peter, um, we already know Peter is one of, one of the disciples. You know, he was, um, he was a devout Jew. He was somebody who would not be breaking bread with Gentiles. Yeah, or somebody who was not of the Jewish faith. He wouldn't be spending time with them. He wouldn't be, um, he wouldn't be sh like having a relationship with them or, sh or sharing of anything with them. But we see like as we get up to these verses that um, Peter gets a word from the Lord, you know, that, hey, you cannot call something unclean that I have made clean. You know, that's something, that's not something you can do like, um, all of these things that you think was unclean before, boom, they're clean, says God. <laughs> you know, like, that's what the Lord says, it's clean. And so Peter's like, oh, what? Like, he has this, this dream or this vision, and, and he's, he's saying, you know, like, I don't understand what this means. And while he's in the midst of trying to understand what the Lord is telling him about clean and unclean, Cornelius, um, who is a Roman, he sends for Peter. So while he's in the midst of trying to understand what's going on, um, somebody goes and gets Peter for Cornelius. He, he sends for Peter. And, um, and then everything that transpires happens in um, verse 44. But Peter starts to speak to these, these Gentiles when he gets to, um, it says, send to Joppa for Simon, who was called Peter. So Peter's in Joppa. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. I'm in verse 33 right now. So I sent for you. So Cornelius is telling Peter, so I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. 
Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. And then Peter begins to speak. And so um, this part of Acts chapter 10 is often referred to as um, the Gentiles Pentecost. Um, and in a few weeks, we'll, we'll cover the Pentecost, yeah, on Pentecost Sunday. But um, it's, it's this, it's like a shorter um, message that Peter is giving to these Gentiles. But while he's speaking to them, Peter is telling them about Jesus. And in verse 44, while he's speaking to them, while he was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. So the beginning of this um, exchange, or before Peter is even with Cornelius and these people, Peter's already second guessing, what, what, is this, what is God telling me? What is this? I know what is unclean. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what is unclean. What is, what is this dream mean that is happening? And it reminds us of where Peter is at, where his cultural, cultural beliefs were. That Jewish people stay in this circle, you know, Gentiles over there. We've even seen um, Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman, that when his disciples came up and saw Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman, even they were like, oh, that's weird. Like, we don't know like what the exchange was really, um, but we know that there must have been um, something that was not right. Yeah, they were looking at this as like, oh, we don't, I'm surprised nobody told you, hey, Jesus, that, we don't do that, you know? We don't we want to be talking to Samaritans. Like, they're, they're unclean people, you know? Uh, and so we know that Peter was this devout Jew that would, that would take pride in knowing like, oh, we're only supposed to be with our people. Like everything that we've read, everything that we know so far of the Old Testament is that God is coming to redeem his people and his people are the Jewish people. But then now we're talking about being clean and unclean. Like, okay, what is this? What is going on here? And then Peter going to this Gentile's house and preaching this sermon, preaching this message about who Jesus is Peter didn't need to get confirmation after he saw the Holy Spirit come upon even the Gentiles. It was right there. There didn't need to be any more convincing. The Holy Spirit came down on the Gentiles, even the Gentiles. And it says that the people that came with Peter, everybody was astonished, you know? It doesn't say that Peter was astonished. But it says that all of the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished. So all of these people that came with Peter that were Jewish people, they were Jewish believers, they were astonished. Whoa, the Holy Spirit came down on them? But, but they weren't Jewish first. They had to be Jewish first. Oh no, oh. But didn't they have to be baptized first? They, they, they were baptized. Oh, but no, the Holy Spirit came on them? And then it says that Peter says, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. Surely no one can stand in the way. And there's this, um, there was this similarity of Peter saying, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized. There's a similarity between that and the Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah. When he said, surely I can be back, you know, surely there shouldn't be anything that can stand in the way of me being baptized. And last week we talked about these, um, these ways that we label people and we categorize people and we see them as, as people that are so far apart from us that we can't see their humanity. We see them so far away from being a brother and sister that we can't possibly imagine them being a part of the same family that we are. Yeah. 
but the Holy Spirit descended on them. The Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And so that reminds me of that first John part where it says, and it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. There were no more questions from Peter about what was going on, what's going on with these Gentiles? Because the Spirit was poured out even on them. And so this encouragement that I want to leave with us tonight is that there was a time where each and every one of us had an even in front of our name. Even Pua? Uh, even Pua. Even Alan K. Kaula, you know, the, um, the hard-headed, you know, man from Southern California or whatever, even him, even him, even Ryan, even Ryan, even on the Gentiles. And so there's this, this thing that I, I keep hearing how offensive that the gospel can be to people, you know? The gospel is offensive. And so me and Ryan were talking about that this week. The gospel is offensive. And so often we hear that being used to, to other people. The gospel is offensive because you cannot be a part of our family. The gospel is offensive because you need to do certain things before you can be welcomed in. No, the gospel is offensive because of who it includes rather than who it excludes. And so this love that we see in our mothers or this love that we were hoping to get from our mothers if we had it, that's like this this sacrificial love that we see being played out in the person of Jesus Christ. And so on this day that can be hard for some of us, this day that can be joyous for some of us, it reminds us of an emptiness that can be felt. Whether we're joyful, we're like, oh, praise the Lord that, you know, I haven't lost any of my kids. Or praise the Lord that I have my mom. But it reminds us that there are mothers or children that are going without. But the same sacrificial love is one that is available to all of us. It's a perfect love that is modeled by Christ Jesus. And Jesus came for all of us, for each and every one of us. So my encouragement tonight would just be, um, just throughout this week, I would encourage each and every one of you, and myself included, is just to seek the Lord in the the things that need to be revealed of who I have othered, who I would put even in front of. What community would I put even blank? It might be a community of people. It might be um, a people group. It might be a whole race of people. It might be a political party. It might be another nation, you know? It might be a specific person in our life that we would put the word even in front of when we would come to be astonished that the Holy Spirit would be poured out on them, that Jesus died even for them. And so today, um, yeah, this Mother's Day is a day that is joyful. It's also a day that is hard or can be hard. And so I would just encourage each and every one of us to rejoice in the love that we have from Jesus. Rejoice in the love that we have been shown because it's the only way that we're able to love anybody else. So we bow our heads with peace. Father God, we love you so much and we thank you for your word. We thank you for just the reminder that you came for each and every one of us. That you came to this, this earth. That you had given your, your only son so that we could have eternal life. Lord, and, and to not just have this eternal life is something that we are so proud that we have. But Lord, that it's something that, oh, that just brings us great joy and just this love for others that has us seeking to bring more into your kingdom. 
that when we see brokenness in the world, that we are driven with a passion to be a part of your redemption. Lord, that the love that we live out, Lord, I just pray the love that we live out is, is us living into our creational intent, the way that we were created to love the relational people that we were created to be, Lord. Reveal to us the walls that we have put up, the laws that we have put in our minds and in our hearts that make following you burdensome, Lord. Because your commands are not burdensome. Lord, I pray that we just seek you in every step of our walk with you, that we seek you in our week, that we would approach relationships and, um, and othering, Lord, that we approach that with humility and say, Lord, what is it that you will have me learn in this? In this exchange, Lord, in this relationship, Lord, there's something that you're wanting me to see. In the same way that you reveal to Peter, even that his, his cultural laws prohibited him from welcoming in people that were outside of his group, Lord, that you revealed that to him and you affirmed it, Lord. You affirmed it, that you came for all of us, Lord, that we are to have relations, relationships with um, not people that just look like us or sound like us or come from the same place, but that we love and welcome in all of your children. Because if we love the Father, we also love his children. Lord, help us to see each and every person in this world, in our community, as an image bearer of you. We love you and we praise you, and we just continue to worship you today. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. All right, so we're going to close out with a, a song tonight. I was just thinking about like uh, you know the, the verses that uh, only the only reason we know what is love is because we was love first yeah. like and knowing love is this that that God sent his only begotten son for die for us that's love like you know so I remember I was talking story with somebody and then he's telling me uh, that in the whole in the whole Bible it doesn't say why God loves he doesn't say why he loves us. He does, though. He is love, yeah? But he says he is love. He said that he so loved the world that he shed his only begotten son. That's how we know what is love. He's because of Jesus. <laughs> you know, and, and the sacrificial love. Oh. I mean, that's what is love, yeah? I mean, love is bad and stuff, but love is in Jesus, brothers. Jesus is like the manifestation of God's love. And he gave that to us so that we can become that to you. <laughs>
Yes, Lord. He says that all. Where your treasure is, there your heart stay. Or where your heart stays, there your treasure stay. And we know that all. Oh, we know that you, you have given us the best gift, oh, that it could give joy, peace, love, faith, your spirit. Lord, we thank you that, oh, yeah, Lord. David, you say that I hid in your word in my heart, so that I don't say it. Your word, thank you, Lord, for your word, the living word, that, oh, yeah, Lord, that you keep us in, Lord, this, this good news, this name, of, this name, Jesus, your name, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you. We love you. I just pray that all, yeah, Lord, must be spoken here tonight that we let them sink in our hearts and, yeah, Lord, Germany, they see, Lord, inside of us. So let your spirit guide us. We give you all the praise, all the glory is yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.